Hello, welcome to this video series on creating music inside of Cubase Elements. In this series, we're going to look at some essential parts of composition and production. In this video, we're going to focus on the cornerstone of music production, and that's the groove. You get your groove right to start with, and you're a step ahead of the game. We're going to use Groove Agent SE to create grooves, record grooves, and then even manipulate the sound a bit before we move on to dealing with the chords and the structure of the actual composition. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is add an instance of Groove Agent SE. So we can add it using this button in the right zone and then accessing it through the drop down menu. Alternatively, you can go over to the media bay, select instruments and double click on Groove Agent SE. Once you double click on it, you'll have access to any production packs that you've purchased and also the factory content. I'm starting with the factory content and I'm just going down to find a preset using the filters and then I double click on the preset to load it over into the project window. I can open up the instrument by clicking on this E button and now I've got access to all of the different percussion hits and drum hits. Over in the pattern tab, you can see a whole lot of pads and we just simply click on one of these pads to trigger them and they're perfectly in time with our tempo or our project tempo. Now, if I turn the click track on, I can use an external MIDI keyboard controller to trigger these grooves and I just have to hold down one note to start recording a pattern into Cubase. It's pretty easy. I'm just going to delete what I've recorded there and show you another way of working with these patterns. Simply drag and drop a pad up into the Groove Agent SE track to copy the MIDI data over into the project window. And once you've got the MIDI data there, you can start editing those grooves. Some of you probably like to get your hands dirty, so in which case, let's just set up a two bar cycle, hit record, and start playing notes on the external MIDI keyboard. So I'm just putting a four on the floor, now it's looping back, I'm adding some percussion, and when I'm happy with that, I can just hit stop. It's now easier than ever to edit what we've just recorded. You just click on it to get the MIDI information in the lower zone. But this is really more I guess, information for playing musical notes. So we can get a specific drum map up by selecting it and then clicking on the event again. And now we've got a drum editor and we've got a drumstick, which we can use to add or remove notes and make sure notes are in time. Speaking of making sure notes are in time, we've got the quantize function. There's never really an excuse to be out of time. It's just a matter of finding the right quantize setting. If you get it wrong, it'll be obvious. So for instance, I've quantized this to one eight and it's too much, I'm over quantizing it. So I'm dropping it back to 1 16th, and there we have it. That's perfectly in time. Okay, so now I can find different elements of the groove. For instance, this pad, and I can start applying, say, a filter to it. I can really get in and manipulate, and I guess sound design what I'm recording. So I'm adding a filter. Now if I go over to the Amp tab, I can turn up the Auxiliary Send, which is only sending an Auxiliary Send from that one pad. If I go over to the Mixer tab, I can start adding effects inside of the effect slots on that one Auxiliary Send that I've just sent that pad to. Let's try a delay. It doesn't really work with the reverb, so I can deactivate the reverb and still leave it loaded in the slot. Now if I just want to add some character to that delay, I can go and add another effect. I can continue adding effects and you can see just how many effects come inside of this Groove Agent SE instrument. I can continue manipulating the sound on each one of these instrument pads that has a sample. I added a little bit of distortion in the filter over the top of that kick drum. Now I'm adding another instance of Groove Agent SC4 because I want to find another pattern or groove that complements this one. Something quite subtle. Maybe a dubby kick or something like that. So I'll go over to the pattern bank and find a pattern. That, that actually complements it quite well. So I'll drag and drop it over. Now it's just a matter of copying and pasting. And you can do that very quickly by picking up on that tab on the right hand side of an event and dragging it over to the right hand side. One of the things I want to achieve in this video is to demonstrate how easy it is to build a track that's not sequential inside of Cubase. So essentially, we're building a track using construction pieces, which are the groove element, and it's really easy to stack all of these building blocks together to see if the idea is going to work out.
while I'm messing around with these blocks and just trying different things, I'm trying to picture how this dancehall groove is going to work in terms of an overall track. So I guess I'm always analyzing what I've got. And at the moment, it's quite a bassy groove. So I think I need some more color. So something like these hats, for instance. Just some light percussion. I'm going to drag and drop this over behind the groove that I have on this second groove Agent SE track, and that's going to give me three different sections to the song. Also, this groove gives me some color, so it's got hi hats and percussion, so it's filling a part of the sonic frequency. Next up, I think I want to make sure that these parts don't get too out of hand in terms of volume. So, once again, I'm going to the mixer, and now I'm going to find the master channel, and I'm going to add a limiter of some description. We've got two limiters. I might use the brick wall limiter, which stops anything going over the area that we basically build a brick wall over. So that means it can't get louder than the point that I specify. Now that I've put a limiter on both my Groove Agent SE tracks, it's time to go and compose some music. This is enough to get me started. I've got a concept and now it's time to build that house over the top of these building blocks. In the next video, we're going to use the Cubase chord track to build a track with chords from scratch. I'll catch you there.